Alright, what's going on guys? Tell Sons back at you with another video. Answering you guys' questions, part one. Yeah, and the reason why we say part one is because there are, let's see, uh, 89 comments. So, uh, of course, we're not going to get all that done in one video. Otherwise, this would be a uh, the length of uh, of a... Uh, of two movies, pretty much. Right. So we're going to split this into at least two or three parts. We'll answer uh, most of the questions here as much as we can. Uh, if this is long, we apologize. So, but you know how we do uh, answering your questions and shit. We just talk too much. We don't shut the fuck up. So, uh, <laughs> I guess we'll start that right now, man. Uh, so, uh, here to answer your questions, we'll open up here with uh, Dogzilla Productions. His question is, do you think Steelers should draft Jalen Hurts? Of course, quarterback from Oklahoma. Um... Now, me personally, I don't think so. I mean, he is a big name. His his journey in college, you know, is a very intriguing and, and great story. You know, how he's going to be coming to the NFL and everything like that. But it's, it's just something off about him that I really don't like. And I feel like even if we do draft him, I feel like he's not really going to fit our scheme. And I don't think he's really going to gel well in a Steelers uniform. That's just me, though. Right. That's just me. Uh, the game against, uh, fuck, who was it? Uh, it was last week. Um, it was Oklahoma and... LSU. Was it? LSU. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Uh, it was Oklahoma and LSU, and I wasn't impressed with Jalen Hurts in that game. I, I wasn't, he, he seemed to be struggling. He was lacking in a lot of things. Um, you know, his environment wasn't helping him either, but still, you know, and, and the thing about Jalen Hurts, of course he's going to need development. He's not going to be a day one starter. That's obvious. He's going to need development. But the thing about his development, he's going to need to be in a system that will benefit him. Right. That system, I don't think fits us. Has never fit us. Uh, the only time it really did well for us was Cordell Stewart. And you could say Cordell Stewart was 15 years ahead of his time and shit. But um, even then, it didn't really work out too well, honestly. Um, but answer your question. I'll put that at maybe. It depends what he does in the combine and how he does right. on and 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 at, at, at pro day and all that good shit. So uh, it depends. Uh, but I'll put that as a maybe for now on. He's definitely a name that many Steelers fans have brought up to draft this year and be the future and eventually develop for the successor right. after Ben. Um, so it's a, it's a name to look out for. It's an intriguing name. I'm sure Tomlin and Colbert and guys like that, uh, Brandon Hunt and everyone. I'm sure they're going to be looking at. Uh, quarterbacks, uh, guys like Jalen Hurt. If he lasts to the second round, that's an option to look at. You know, it's a big name that we could potentially draft. So I'll put that in a maybe. So, but next question is from Ian Owens. He says, "What's your favorite band?" Uh, I don't really have a favorite band. Um, I'm not big on bands, honestly. I'm not really big on music acts, honestly. I, I mean, right. I, I listen to music, of course, but I'm not really big on you know, going to concerts or, or just investing in, in a specific artist or band. I'm just not one of those guys. Well, I mean, um, neither, neither am I, but if I were to select a band that I listen to, that's definitely Korn. I, I, I actually like Korn's music. I feel like it's very, you know, in a way, you know, you kind of invest into it. You know, it's kind of like... But also get you pumped up. Right. Depending on your mood. Right. Um, but Korn is a real nice band, man. Uh, so is uh, Linkin Park, of course. Um... And then, of course, we're talking heavy metal and everything, but uh, I'll probably say them. Uh, they were really good bands and shit. Of course, uh, Metallica is, is another band to look at, one of the greatest bands of all time. So, uh, yeah, so probably those guys, honestly. Right. So, but yeah, man. Next question is from Dogzilla Productions again. He says, what new players should the Steelers sign and what players should they re-sign? Uh, well, well, we'll start with re-sign. Bud Dupree. Bud Dupree. If we can, Javon Hargrave. Right. What? I mean, it's gonna be hard to get. It's gonna be hard to even, even even get one of those guys going because their 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 price is gonna be high, and to get both, it's gonna be almost. I don't want to say impossible, but it's definitely gonna be a struggle. Uh, we gotta create some cast space. Right. We're low on cast space. We gotta create room. We gotta cut guys, um, which leads. We us, gotta restructure contract. Everything like that. Right. Um, and that leads us to our next thing. Who should we cut? Mark Barron. Obviously. Uh, Vance McDonald. Although, although, I wouldn't mind keeping Vince McDonald as long as he agrees to a cheaper deal. If we restruct his con restructure his contract and take some cap away, then I wouldn't mind keeping Vince McDonald. Because honestly, he's not in the right to... Uh, like, Fickner and his system has no idea how to utilize tight ends. And although Vance isn't getting open himself, it's 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 not helping Vince McDonald. Even blocking-wise, he hasn't really done well. He right. hasn't done well at all. Technically, last season. Right, right, right. I wouldn't mind keeping Vance as long as it's for a cheaper deal. But at the same time, if he, if he doesn't 
uh, agree to a cheaper deal, get him out of here. Right. Um, of course, like we said, Baron, Vance McDonald. Chickalow. Um, Chickalow, obviously. Ramon Definitely Foster. Chickalow. Ramon Foster. You know, I like Foster, but he is getting up to age. He's not really the guard he, want, he once was in his younger years, obviously. And, you know, it's, it's one of those cuts that's going to be a sacrifice, but... It's probably what needs to be done because for, we need to keep this defense intact. Right. And Bud Dupree is a huge part of that, especially in the pass rush. Yeah. Him and Watt were arguably the best uh, uh, outside linebacker duo in the league last year, and you got to keep that together. Right. You definitely do. Yeah, it's just if there's a way we can keep the, the defense glued together, that'd be great because their chemistry is is out of nowhere. It's through the roof. It's, 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 it's great, and it's what led this defense to help us in most games right. this year. So hopefully we can keep the defense glued together. But offseason should be interesting. Um, as for new players who the Steelers should sign, I don't know too many free agents going into this offseason. we got to, of course, research on that. Although, of course, tight end is a big name or a big position to look at. Right. I'm hearing Austin Hooper is going to be a free agent, although he's definitely going to want a massive contract. Same thing with Hunter Henry. Um Let's see who else is there. Uh, of course, you got to look at quarterback. Maybe Teddy Bridgewater, but the Saints might be wanting to keep him back right. or keep him around. Um, of course, uh, who, who else is going to be a free agent there? Um, shit, not, not too many names I can honestly think of. Uh, again, we just got to do some research on that shit, man. Um, but, you know, I, I'm not expecting Steelers to do so much in free agency because they're probably going to prioritize – the guys they have now and trying to keep them around, guys like B.J. Finney, and and uh, they just signed Tuzar Skipper to a two-year extension. Right. Um, who else? Uh, of course, Bud Dupree, uh, uh, Javon Hargrave, guys like that. You know, So I think they're going to really prior- prioritize the guys they have now before going to free agency. Uh, but should be interesting, though. Right. And uh, next question goes from uh, Steel Juju 19 although he, he has a good number of questions, man. Uh, what do you think of the Terminator movies? Uh, I grew up on that shit. Uh, although as an adult, I haven't really watched them. I mean, they're always on TV. They're on TNT or, or, or TV, no, no, not TBS, um, AMC and and stuff like that. But I I don't really watch them as much as I used to as, I don't know. I just, I like, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger and, 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 and his work and everything. It's just, as a grown up, I just, for some reason, can't invest in those types of movies anymore. I don't know why. Um, but I do like the first and second one, though. Um, as a kid, I used to watch it all the time and right. stuff. Personally, I think the second one's better, but I have seen I, I've seen one and two. I haven't seen three, and the recent ones that have come out, I mean, I haven't seen them. Yeah. But I've heard from like reviews and everything that they're not as good as the first two, right. and I can honestly see that because you can never you can never beat out the first and second Terminators. Right. Those are classics. Right. You know. So, should we bring back Bell? I would be up for it. But yes, don't, as, as would I. The only way I would bring him back is if Adam Gaze and the Jets just flat out cut him. We can't afford his contract, especially with us trying to get Dupree and, and Hargrave back and shit. We can't afford him. We can't afford his contract right now. Only way I'd take him back is if the Jets flat out cut him, which is very possible because Adam Gaze never won a bell in the first place. And I'm not sure if many teams are going to want to trade for him with his contract and him being rusty. The only way that teams would be able to trade for Bell and his circumstances is if they have the tools for him to succeed. Right. And not many teams have that. The only teams that have that is us. The Steelers and Bell are a match made in heaven. They just gel well, and if he would have remained with the Steelers, man, he could have been in talks to be one of the greatest of all time. Right. But, unfortunately, Greed got the best of Bell, and it was a pretty bad divorce. But could they reconcile? I would hope so. You know, I like Connor. But he can't stay healthy. He's going to be best as number two, rotating here and there. Keep him healthy. Keep him fresh. Bell, he's obviously that every uh, that th- uh, three, four down back that can, uh, of course, move the chains and, mm-hmm. and make some big plays as long as he has the tools to succeed. So I don't mind bringing him back, but only only if he's cut and we just sign him up. Right. Because uh, I'm sure he'd take a – well, I can't say that because he's a fucking – Greedy Bash. I was going to say he, he might take a cheaper deal to sign with us, but he's a greedy Bash. So, I don't know, man, but we'll see. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Next question is, is NXT better than AEW? Yes. Uh, yes, it is. I would say so in most aspects, although I've kind of enjoyed AEW more. Um, but AEW definitely need, uh, still needs to work on some things. 
uh, time management, of course, audio issues and shit like It's minor stuff. Minor stuff that they can easily fix. Yeah, they're, they're a new wrestling company, they're a new uh, TV show, you know, that's starting to get their foot in the water. You right. know, they're, they're still learning, they're still... You know, learning the ropes and everything right. when it comes to television. Right? right, but 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 their booking and their creative is 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 nice. It's it's fun to watch. AW and NXT both Wednesday nights overall are just fun to watch. They are. They're both great companies, great creative teams, and just put on great content, great wrestling. Yeah, and that's all we can if ask. If you are a wrestling fan, Wednesday nights are the nights for you. Not Monday or Friday. It's definitely Wednesday. Absolutely. Will Randy Fichtner be fired? I would hope so, but I don't think so. Uh, I I just don't think so. If he hasn't been, if he if he has not been fired this far yet, then he's not going to be fired at all, in my opinion. If anything, unfortunately, they're going to let his contract run out. If anything, they're probably just going to demote him back to a quarterback coach, which is fine. Which is fine. Just don't put him in charge of the uh, of the whole offense. I don't mind him as a quarterback coach. Just don't put him in charge. Right. But they're probably going to let his contract run out because the Steelers don't necessarily fire coaches and shit. Yeah, no, I mean, that's and of what course, they with Todd Haley. Well, like we were. Praying and hoping Haley would get fired. He never got fired. We just let his contract expire. Right. So that's more than likely the case for Fickner, unfortunately. Right. And, of course, you know, his his relationship with Ben, that's obviously going to remain intact. And I don't think Fickner's going anywhere. But at least demote him back to a quarterback coach. Just that. Just quarterback coach. Right. Get a new new, uh, offense coordinator, man. Seriously. Do you think Ben will win in our Super Bowl? If he can stay healthy... Uh, yes. I, I want to say, personally, I don't know. I really don't know. Because, I mean, I love Ben. Definitely, arguably the, no, definitely the best Steelers quarterback of all time. One of the best of all time. But he is just way too injury prone with his age. He is. Right. And that's unfortunate. But I want to say yes, but I really don't know. Now that we have a top five defense, if Ben can just stay healthy, I want to say yes. But personally, I don't know. I really don't. I hope so. I just don't know. Right. That, that, that's all I can really answer to the question. Right. And, and honestly, how far can Tomlin take us with, you know, his built team here? So, I don't know. We'll see what happens in the next coming years. Ben has two years left in his contract. Uh, this defense, if we can keep them glued together and keep them in their prime, we have a shot. We have a big shot. And with everyone stepping up on the offense in terms of receivers, get a tight end, get a dependable running back, get some youth on the, off- on the on the offensive line, we have a shot. We have a real shot. Right. Um, but you know, the past few years we could have made we could have made it there to the big game. Uh, we had the team. We had the talent. We had everything. It just came down to coaching. And again, with Ben coming back and. And all the shit we have now, it will return to the coaching's, you know, responsibility here to get us right. that far. So, we'll see, man. Is it time to draft a quarterback or a running back? I would definitely say running back. Uh, I would say both. Um, but if I had to answer one, I'd say running back. We need a dependable running back. Right. Although, I like Benny Snell, and I, I would totally be up for giving him the chance or give him the keys to the car and just have him run with it as number one for this year and see what he can do. I'd totally be up for that, but... Um, at the same time, we need, we need a little bit more uh, elusiveness and speed and power right. there at, at running back to when, help When it comes out. to either quarterback or running back, I would definitely say draft running back more than quarterback. Right. Um, because I don't mind Rudolph as the backup. We just need some veteranship, veteran experience at quarterback outside of Ben. We need someone that can, you know, come in, is, is somewhat reliable, right. and, and, and can help out Rudolph. I mean, we need someone that can actually – develop Rudolph well outside of Ben. We need someone that can help Rudolph and develop him and teach him everything. You know, Fichter's not that. Ben could be that, but, you know, him and his injury and his health and him coming back, Mm -hmm. he has so much on his plate right now. So we need someone to help out Rudolph if the Steelers still see him as the future quarterback. So, uh, again, we'll see. Have you seen the movie Jeepers Creepers? Absolutely. All three of them. uh, I like the first two. More. The third one wasn't too bad, but the first two are definitely great, man. Yeah, seriously. Uh, quite honestly, I'm a big fan of Jeepers Creepers. I feel like he's di- he's different. He's more unique than the other killers that we're known to watch and know. Yeah. But, yes, I've watched Jeepers Creepers. Yeah. What's your favorite Halloween moment? I'm sure he's talking about the Halloween movie series with Michael Myers and shit. Uh, shit, I don't know. See, there's a bunch. I really can't pick one out. Uh, I'd probably say, uh, fuck, I gotta really think about this one. Probably when uh, Lori chopped off Michael's head in H two O at the end of H two O, 
uh, and, until they brought him back on resurrection and shit. Um, Almost they shouldn't. I don't That's... mind resurrection. I just don't. I don't mind resurrection. It's just that if you decapitate a serial killer and Michael Myers, you just can't bring him back. Like, oh, he, oh, he switched bodies. And yes, if you guys didn't see Resurrection, I may have spoiled it, but whatever. Yeah. You, you had like 18 years to watch it. Right. <laughs> but I can't really think of a Halloween moment, really. I think mine would probably have to be... I, I really don't know. Probably well, the first one when he stuck the knife in the... What was his name? Ed? Oh, just the dude with the glasses yeah, and the yeah. wall. I, yeah. I can't remember his name, but I th- that was actually really cool because back in the day, that was rarely seen and never done. And the right. fact that it's like... That happened. That's actually pretty cool. And it's a unique sight to see, yeah. too. And don't forget, we still have two Halloween movies to come out. This year, which is 2020. Happy New Year, by the way, everyone. And next year. So I'm, I'm excited for that. Uh, are they beating the horse? Are they uh, milking the cow a little too much? Is, is this more of a money grab? Probably. But I'm excited, bro. I'm a big I fan mean, of the Halloween John series. John Carpenter and Laurie... I uh, almost said Laurie Strode. Uh, Jamie Lee. Jamie, thank you. Yeah. Jamie Lee so, together. I mean, both of them have perfected the Halloween series. I feel like they uh, revived the series considering what Rob Zombie did. Right, because I enjoyed the one that came out uh, two years ago. Right. Or a year and a half ago. That shit was great. Yeah. Um. So, yeah. Should we trade Connor? Uh, I'd be up for it. I would totally be up for it. Uh, I think we get some decent value out of him. Uh, but do I see it? Honestly, no. I think the Steelers still like him and his story and everything. And I think they can still see him as a backup. Right. If they do see him as a backup. Who knows? Maybe they're still thinking he's the starter. Who knows? Maybe they're not even thinking of running back at this point. Maybe they're just still stuck on Connor. So we, we don't really know, man. Um, but should we trade Connor? I would totally be up for it. As Because we only have, from my knowledge, we have the second round pick. Because we trade the first for Minka. The third round pick, which has yet to be announced. We have two fourth round picks. We have a six round pick and another six round pick. So that's five or six picks. So we kind of need a, a little more uh, draft value or draft capital. Right. Trading Connor could definitely help, but I, I feel like we, we would only trade Connor if the price was right. So we'll see. Right. So, and uh, his last question Have you seen Terminator Dark Fate? Again, uh, we haven't really seen the the the, the newer ones. Uh, we got to catch up on a lot of shit, man. You know, there's many movie series that we haven't catched up on. The Terminators, the the Transformers, uh, Fast and Furious. I keep telling myself, I, I got to get into the Fast and Furious series, and I've yet to do so. Right. I've been saying that for fucking six years. I've yet to do so. So, uh, but great questions, man. And uh, next question comes from Zacharia Hudkins. I apologize if I uh, pronounce any of you guys' names incorrectly. What is your dream job? My dream job is actually something that I want to do in my life, and it's actually to become a professional wrestler. Mm-hmm. I, I believe I said this back in the last Q&A, uh, mid-season Q&A, I am still looking at schools on how to train to become a professional wrestler. It's still a dream of mine to do. It's still something that I would like to do in my life Yeah, and everything. I'm hoping that for, for uh, 2020 as a New Year's resolution, I'm hoping that I can start that this year. Yeah. Sometime this year. And who knows, man? Maybe we can fucking uh, be the next Hardy But Maybe I'll join in with you. We'll be the next Hardy Boys. We'll be the next <coughs> Young Bucks or, or, or whatever, man. You know, so it's something I thought about too. Excuse me. I, it's something I thought about too, honestly. We could be a great tag team and shit. But another thing is, of course, journalism. Uh, you know, um, in sports and everything. So uh, I don't necessarily have a complete proper dream job and I know that's pretty... Sad because we're 20 years old right now and we haven't really set on a specific job yet. All right. Um, we're kind of lacking in that, but uh, to answer your question, I'm not necessarily sure. But those are a few options, honestly. So, right. Dogzilla Productions ask another question: What do you th- what, what what do the Steelers do with Big Ben? Keep him. Keep him. Keep him. Start him forever and ever. I don't care. <laughs> forever and ever. Uh, after seeing what uh we 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 could be uh without Ben. For God knows how many years, this year, fuck it, keep him forever. Find the founding or some shit. Yeah, yeah, seriously, at this point. Yeah. And he asked another question. Uh, what do you think of Juju and what should the Steelers do with him? I, I think we should keep him. Um, I don't necessarily disagree with the people that have criticized Juju. Um, but you got to think he has been dealing with poor quarterback play all year. 
and he is still young. He, he's, he's still our youngest fucking receiver. He's our number one receiver. He is our most experienced receiver, but he's still at the same yeah, time. Yeah, he's only 22 years old. Yeah, he's our youngest receiver in terms of age. So he still has a lot to learn. He still has a lot to learn as a number one and everything and in football and everything. So hopefully in his fourth year, he's learned a lot. You know, the thing with Juju is that, you know, although he did have a very disappointing season as a number one, you know, declining numbers and injuries that plagued him pretty much, but I do appreciate how he took a leadership role at the wide receiver position, considering he was our youngest, but he was our most experienced, and he stepped up big time as a leader and did what he could, even with even with injury. You know, he stepped up, he helped the receivers when they needed help, you know, especially Deontay Johnson when he was making – countless mistakes early on in his rookie career and then Deontay Johnson pretty much um what's the word I'm looking for boosted upgraded Bo- yeah upgraded boosted and pretty much prevented more uh turnovers you know so I do respect and appreciate Juju for that um I do see him as a number one but with him being still young he still needs a lot more development and I feel like that was clearly shown yeah and everything but I still like Juju I st- I am still a fan of Juju and I hope he has a much more progressive and better season next season. Right. I really do. So, yeah. DeCarry asked, what went wrong this year? Big Ben got hurt and Randy Fickner, Fickner took over. Pretty much everything uh, on the offense went wrong. Yeah, so. Uh, still, still uh, Dictate said, what's your opinion on the Fire Tomlin Petty bandwagon that's going around this fan base? Like, comments on Twitter and your videos. Uh, you know, after our, 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 uh, our, our recap of the Ravens game and everything, I, I understand why people say it because they pretty much were 8-5 and five, and then they flopped down the stretch and failed to make the playoffs when we had control of our destiny and then we eventually needed to return the help and shit. So right. I, I, I get that, but you got to think it's also Tomlin that, you know, put us in this position. You know, when Ben went down, he made the move for Minka Fitzpatrick and shit and just... Help to deal. I honestly think now I, I don't mean to take, uh, or I don't mean to discredit Keith Butler and shit, um, but I, I'm I I heard from several reports that Mike Tomlin took over the defense and Keith Butler was just there for show. So if that's the case, Tomlin took over that defense and made plays and shit, uh, or made the play calls. That's a hell of a job by Tomlin. Remember, he is a defensive coach. He used to be uh with Tampa Bay. He used to be a, I believe a defensive back coach or some shit. Um, well, Tampa Bay he was defensive coordinator for the Vikings until he signed with us. Right, so, coach. so he's a defensive coach, and although this decade, or the previous decade, I should say, you know, he had to keep drafting defense to replace the guys that he was drafting and shit, and I get that, um, but Tomlin has done uh, a really good job this year of, you know, losing Ben and still keeping us alive and taking us eight and eight and shit and still fighting hard for the for the playoffs we were one game away from making the playoffs and shit so right and and, and we were not even supposed to be in that predicament you lost your future gold jacket franchise quarterback you're not even supposed to be in that predicament no matter what yeah so tomlin made the move to get make fitzpatrick and in the offseason last offseason he made the move to get devin bush he knew that he had to upgrade that defense he replaced ryan shazier with devin bush and he got a better safety and Mika Fitzpatrick, and look what happened with our defense, top yeah, five. Right. Our defense was unstoppable and consistent every game. Right, because think about it, man. Sean Davis was out all fucking year, and we would have to rely on Cameron fucking Kelly. Yeah, imagine, uh, just, just think, uh, yeah, exactly. Just think of the record we would have had if Cameron Kelly was our starting free safety. Right, so that was a move we had to make, and props to Tomlin and Colbert and whoever made the, the influence. Uh, I believe Brandon Hunt who uh, is apparently a favorite to take over Colbert's job when he steps down next year, I think, he said. Um, then again, he's taking it year by year, so we'll see what happens. But right. uh, th- they all were a major influence in going after Minka, and, and it was just a, a trade completely paid off well. Uh, so, yeah, man, honestly. So, And speaking of Tomlin, the, the undertuber says, should Tomlin be coach of the year? Fuck yeah is what I say. Agree or disagree? I thought that, um, now, if he were to make the playoffs, I still would say he should be in contention for that, but there's no way he was going to beat uh, a Kyle Shanahan or uh, a John Harbaugh or a... Uh, or even a Sean McDermott of the Bills, concerning how much he turned that whole franchise around this season. Right, so those are guys ahead of him, 
that are probably going to win Coach of the Year. Um, the Tomlin should definitely get the respect and the uh, notoriety of what he did to the Steelers team this season. Like I said, considering Ben went down for the whole year. Right, but should he be Coach of the Year? No. Um, you know, compared to who is going to win it, I just don't think so. Now, I understand he lost his quarterback, and it's hard for him to rebound and shit, and what he did was incredible and prop to him. But, you know, compared to the other guys and how they've, you know, not only have used their depth in a, in, in a great way, but have built their team up from the ground and shit, all three of them, mm-hmm. honestly, have just been great coaches. They've done a, an amazing job this year. So I think those guys are well ahead of Tomlin and the coach of the year uh, candidate. Right. So, next question comes from Josh K. What is your top five favorite football moments, NFL or college, not involving the Steelers? That's a damn good question. Um, I, I, I that's going to take a lot of thinking for yeah, me. Yeah, because I've I've been thinking about this question for a fucking week, and I still have yet to even come up with one. The only one I can think of is the Minneapolis miracle. Um, that's one. And it's kind of odd thinking that the Vikings and Saints are going to be. Facing each other again in the playoffs. This weekend, so that should be interesting. Um, I believe that's Sunday, so that should be good. Yeah. Uh, so that's probably one. <clears throat> um, top five favorite football moments, not including the Steelers. Like, shit, uh, I can name five that include the Steelers right off the top of my head, but I can't do that. Yeah, so <laughs> um, let's see. This is going to take some time, so. This is going to take some serious time. Um, Son of a bitch. You know what? If I can't think of it right now, I'll probably think of it before part two and then we'll Open part two by answering that question here, because that's a damn good question. That's a mm-hmm. hard question. That's a time-consuming question, honestly, because you seriously got to think. And I'm trying to think of plays that I have seen. Um, you know, I can't just say, oh, the the David Tyree helmet catch, because I, I never, I haven't, I didn't see that live, so I can't really say, oh, it's my favorite, one of my favorite plays of all time. I'm trying to be, you know, realistic here and and, and plays that I have seen live. Um, so, the Minneapolis Miracle, the Miracle Miami, because that was cool. Um, let's see. So that's two uh, for you. I didn't even come up with one. <laughs> one would probably have to be Aaron Rodgers' Hail Mary against the Oh, Lions. yeah, that, that's, that's another one. That's definitely one. I remember us, just, just seeing that in person, it was like, holy shit, that just happened. Yeah, watching that <laughs> live was nuts. Um, let's see. Let's see. I'm trying to think of a defensive play. Um, son of a bitch. Man, that's a hard fucking question, bro. That seriously that is. is. Um, I think another one for me is the Sean Jackson's punt return against the Giants when the Eagles came back from a big deficit yeah. against the Giants. Yeah. Um, you know, that was definitely a great moment for Philly fans and just a great moment for football fans in general, just seeing how they won that game. Right. right. Uh, God damn. See, I'm trying to think of Super Bowls here as well. Uh, the thing is, every time I think of the Super Bowl, I think of, damn, the Patriots have been in for four fucking years. Um, so I can't really go that route, because I don't like any of that shit. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I can't, I can't say the, the, the fucking, uh, the, the, the Philly special, because I don't like Philly, although I was rooting for him that year, I didn't like Philly. Um, although that was a cool play, I kind of marked down on that one, seeing Foles catch that touchdown when Brady fucking dropped it. Like, like, yeah, that was good. Uh, a few drives... No, fuck it. That's probably my third favorite. Um, I don't know why I got two favorite Philly plays, but fuck it. <laughs> uh, God damn, not involving the Steelers, but that's impossible, man. Um, oh, yeah. Aaron Rodgers, Hail Mary against the the Cardinals. Although they didn't win that game with, with, with Jeff Janis and shit. How was being pressured, and then he just threw it up for a legit Hail Mary, and Jeff Janis caught that. Right. Watching that live, bro, I freaked the fuck out. I'm like, hello. <laughs> Fuck does that happen? Yeah, seriously. They didn't. They didn't win the game and shit. And Larry Fitzgerald just proved to you why he's still one of the greatest of all time in overtime. But that was still a great fucking moment, man. Right. That was nuts. Playoff football, man. You can't ask for anything better. Uh, let's see. So I need two more, but I just don't know what. Yeah. Um. Let's see. What was that? What was that four, three? I, I fuck. I think you put three. Uh, See, I'm trying to think of college, too. But the thing is, I don't really pay attention to college as much as we should. Uh, fuck. Yeah, I really don't know. So, you see, we watch so much football, but, yeah, we can't even think of great football moments that don't include the Steelers. And that, that that's the hard part about this. Yeah. 
Uh, it doesn't include the steel. It's just like, damn. The Beast Quake. Against Saints? Against the Saints and the Cardinals. That shit was cool. So is that all combined one? I'd say so. Right. Um, Marshawn Lynch is fucking great. So fucking charismatic. Yeah. Just about that action. <laughs> <I'm sure. laughs> uh, um, and, you know what? The, four, the final one I'll put... And this is in no particular order, by the way. Um... I'll put the. Let's see, I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think. I honestly don't know. I, I, I cannot think of any more. Like, damn. We're wasting a lot of time on this. We apologize. Yeah. But damn, this is, a, this is a great question, man. Um. But I, 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 I ran out. But I, I ran out. Yeah, I'm like drained out. Like, I really can't think of any more. Yeah, man. But that's a hell of a question. It is. Honestly, That's man. a real good question. Seriously. Um, but uh, Tyron J- Johnson asked, mock draft ASAP, and do we trade Tomlin? If so, who do we draft? Well, there was talks about us trading Tomlin to the Redskins early early on in the season. But, but now that's not going to happen because he got Ron Rivera for five years. Yeah, so good for them. Uh, although we could still trade Tomlin, and I would not mind trading Tomlin as long as the value is, is there. Um, but you got to think, if we trade away Tomlin... Who are we going to put in his place? Yeah, exactly. we got to have a candidate of who's going to be his replacement. Right. So, uh, and, and we don't have anyone. I, I mean, our best option right now is Tomlin. I mean, there's free agents like uh, Mike McCarthy. And, I don't want Mike McCarthy. Uh, <laughs> there's, uh, apparently, uh, Urban Mayer's trying to get into the NFL. Um eh. Lincoln Riley, um, I was up for Riley, but I'm not really on that train anymore. Um, that, that, that's just me. So, but I mean, if we do trade Tomlin, uh, pr- preferably for a first round pick, we could go after a quarterback. Hell, actually, we could trade him next year and 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 use that pick to go get Trevor Lawrence or fucking uh uh uh, uh Justin Fields or some shit. Um, yeah, I would prefer Trevor Lawrence more, but or. You know, that'd be great, or that'd be really fucking great, actually. <laughs> that probably, that's honestly the most realistic option we have I think that would really, of, of trying to get Trevor Lawrence. Right, and I think um, that would really have to depend on how Tomlin and the Steelers do next season. So I think that really falls on what we do. Right, and we have to have a legit, pure person right there to take Tomlin's job. Because this, this upcoming year could be the very last year that we see Tomlin and Colbert together. You know, right. um, I'm not saying that we're going to trade Tomlin or that's a very realistic option and shit, but right. it's possible. You know, anything's possible, man. It's not necessarily gone, honestly, so damn, man. Yeah, so. I mean, it's not out the realm of possibility. But right. as of right now, I don't think we should trade Tomlin. He's probably our best option. Right. So, still Jedi, shoot shout out to you, man. He said, where's my fancy football crown? I am the captain now. Oh, shit. Uh... Yeah, Steel Jedi won the uh, our, our fantasy league that we had for the Steel City Disciples. You shout out to all that, man. You guys know who you are. Steel Maiden, Renegade 412, Steel Jackson, Steel Jedi, Steel Logic. Uh, man, there's so many. Um, Brune Steel. Um, let's see who else is there. Goddamn, man. We've grown so much as a fucking... Yeah, seriously. Like, looking back like three, four years ago, considering what we were now, how how many more... We got uh, now, yeah, man. Yeah, it's that, like, that's... damn. That was like massive. See, that's a great fucking... Group or community, honestly, man. Yeah, so, seriously. Man. Um, but so a huge he, shout out to all you guys. Yeah, you, man. You guys but, are great. You guys are awesome. And definitely check out uh, those guys that we mentioned. Yeah, uh, especially Steel Jedi because uh, he won the fancy matchup that we had for Steel City Disciples. And, of course, he's going to be having a... It's mock draft season. He's one of the mock draft gurus of the Steel City Disciples. So definitely subscribe to him. He's going to have a lot of big mock drafts coming out. So that should be real uh, interesting and shit. So, yeah, yeah man. And uh, Ryan Irwin D- Dial... Is that how you pronounce it? Again, I apologize if I pronounce it incorrectly. Any ideas on which tight ends we should draft if available? Um, now, I haven't really looked too much at the time. I know you have. I really personally there, have There's one specific name I've looked at, and that's Bryson Hopkins from Purdue, I believe. Uh, I, I wouldn't mind him. I think he's going to be a real nice tight end. I think he's one of the more uh, better tight ends right. in this upcoming draft. If we want to – if we restructure Vance's contract – for this year and keep him around up until 
after next year or for, for this upcoming season and get rid of him after that season. Uh, there's tight ends next year. There's the Penn State tight end, which I forgot his name, but he had a great showing in the bowl game. Mm-hmm. Um, Cole Komet from uh, Notre Dame is a real another option. So uh, there's, 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 there's a lot of options in this draft, uh, but there's also – some good options next year. So, right. I mean, personally, I don't see a, us drafting a tight end this year because we still got Vance. We traded a fifth-round pick for Nick Vanette, and we're probably going to re- try to resign him. And we still got Zach Zentry, who, in a way, we're developing. Right. So, we got uh, we already got three tight ends, and I don't, I don't really see us drafting a tight end, especially early. Right. You know, but it like, depends. I, w- I would like it, but I really don't see it, unless we cut Vance and, yes, get a tight end. Yes. So... Uh, but again, all these next two months is gonna determine how 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 our draft looks and everything. So mm-hmm. it's gonna be interesting, man. The soft season's gonna be really interesting. Jay Kelly asks, "Who do you want to be the Steelers' next franchise quarterback?" Great fucking question, man. Now, 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 one name like Trevor Lawrence, of right. course. Uh, although that's probably unrealistic because we gotta trade up for him to go get him. But he's and a he's a he's a hell of a fucking tight end, man. Tight end. Tight end. Fucking receiver. He's got the size of a tight I end. I said receiver. Yeah, a uh, quarterback. Excuse me. Um. Another guy I would like, now, it depends if he returns or not, Jake Fromm from Georgia. Uh, I like Jake Fromm last year. Uh, he has struggled this year, um, but he could potentially return next year and continue his development, which I think would be ideal for him, you know, return next year. Because his, his draft value has, has dropped. Um, so he would be probably a day two guy at best. This year, and he's definitely going to need development. But I think if he returns another year, not only is his draft value going to increase if he gets better, but he's going to get better as a quarterback. He's going to get better at his craft. Mm -hmm. And that's another guy I would look at for next year if he returns. Um, So that's one. Um, Of course, people put up Jalen Hurts. Uh, Like we said uh, at the beginning of the video, you guys know our opinion on that. Right. Um, Now, I may sound crazy here. Now, I am still... A little bit, like, there's still a little bit of promise for me when it comes to Rudolph, but he did have a very bad year. Well, he was thrown in too early. Uh, he he clearly wasn't ready for the position he was in. He was Man, still under development. That's what I'm saying. Right. You know, um, he had a bad year, but that's probably because of all, all, everything that happened to him this year, coming in, you know, starting for pretty much the whole season, in a way, you know, replacing Ben. The Miles Garrett situation, and, and countless uh, injuries and hits that he suffered, and his environment overall. You know, injuries, his uh, uh, coordinator, his 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 offensive line. No, nothing. He had a bad year. He, I mean, he just nothing around him helped him, uh, and that kind of fucked up his development and shit. So right now, if, I feel like if we develop him a little bit more, he could get a bit better. Now, I'm not saying. Well, I hope, in a way, he could still be the franchise quarterback franchise quarterback, I just don't know yet. I feel like if we just see a little bit more development, then I think we'll finally get our answer. That's all I'm trying to say. Yeah, so I'll give Rudolph another year, and then we'll see if he is indeed our future quarterback uh, camp and training camp, uh, camp and preseason, excuse me, is going to be pretty key for him. So we'll see what happens. Right. Um, but next question. Uh, Matt Bell, It's uh, he actually has a video suggestion. Do a Steelers first-round redraft for the last decade from t- 2010 to 2019? That's a great idea. That's a really great idea. Um, that's a damn great idea. Inst- and if, actually, instead of making the video suggestion, we might just do that next year or next net net in the next uh, Q and A answering your vids video. Yeah, the part uh, two or one. answering your questions video. Yeah, part two. So we might open with that as well. So uh, that's interesting. That's really because we have a few guys already that we're thinking of from, of course, 2016, 2013, um, 2018. Just you know, just uh, we already have a few guys lined up right there, so yeah, that might be uh, an open uh, part two and shit. So that's a good suggestion, man. And uh, Alex D asks, what off season moves should we make? Um, well, of course, cuts are like we said, Baron, and 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 McDonald possibly, or at least restructures contract. Uh, there's the uh, cut Foster, I'd say, cut Chicolo. I would restructure Ben's contract. I'd probably try to restructure Tua's contract. I would restructure. Uh, who else? Um, maybe Williams con Vince Williams contract. Um, maybe Stephen Nelson's contract. So th- th- there's so many ways we can create cap space. It just it depends if guys are going to be open to to doing so. Right. Exactly. Um, and of course, free agent moves. 
Uh, maybe tight end. It depends what we do with tight end. I would definitely go get a veteran quarterback. Um, nothing too fancy, honestly, but just, just get some, someone with experience that can help out the quarterback uh, situation and shit. Um, There's just a lot of moves we got to make, especially restructuring contracts, and cuts, if, and concerned the Steelers said that t- uh, s- re-signing Bud Dupree is their top priority. They got a lot of moves to do. Yeah, and of course, uh, offense, a new offensive coordinator. Tomlin has said he is not opposed to looking at a, a new quarterback coach, which means he could be, you know, shafting Randy Fickner, and that's not like the Steelers or Tomlin, so who knows? Um, or we might just uh, demote Fickner back as quarterback coach and go get a coordinator, which I'm hoping that's the case. I'm hoping that's the case. Yeah, seriously. So, um, yeah, man. The paper portal says, in my opinion, the offense, among many things, needs a tight end who can stretch the field. Which guys through free agency or the draft do you think could fill that need? We, uh, we of course, mentioned some guys this year and next year. Bryson, Hopkins, Cole Komet, the Penn State tight end, just to name a few. I know there's many other tight ends we got to search up and do some research on. Right. Free agency, like we said, Austin Hooper, Hunter Henry, but, you know, th- those guys are going to want some big contracts, and we have our own guys to worry about before going after guys like that. Exactly. Although that is a big need completely, but it, it depends. Do you want to do you want to swap out one other need and have to worry about another need? You know what I mean? So, like, go after a tight end, like, say, uh, Austin Hooper, which would be a great fucking signing, but miss out on Bud Dupree, which, you know, many people are saying Dupree just stepped up just because he was in a... a, a you know, his last year's contract and The big shit. contract year. Right, and and now once he gets his money, he's going to be all fucking lazy again, which is possible. It's very possible. But, you know, he and TJ Watt are looking really well together, and do you want to really lose that on this defense? Exactly. So, I don't know, man. It, it, it's tough. It's really tough, but it's, you know, we again, we still have the draft to look at. Uh, another name to look at in frequency in terms of tight end is Eric Ebron, he could take a pretty cheap deal, but his issue is he drops a lot of passes, mm-hmm. and we are, we've all had that. Last year with uh, Mr. Uh, Concrete Hands, Dante Moncrief, and uh, Johnny Holden and shit, so do we want to worry about that at the tight end position? Exactly. So, we, we can't risk getting more drops or anything like right. that. Even with the receivers, you know, the younger guys, they, they were still doing that. Right. So, so we, we can't have that. Right. So Bill's Mafia says, if the Steelers fire Fickner, who do you hope would slash will be the next OC? Who do you guys hope the Steelers draft with their second round pick? Well, to his first question about the new OC, Pat Shermer is 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 officially fired by the Giants. He's a guy I wouldn't mind having as offensive coordinator. He's a really good offensive coordinator. He's an offensive mind. Uh, he's not a head coach. But no, he, definitely not. Now, now when he was with the Browns and not when he was with the Giants. Right, but he is an offensive mind. Uh, he did well with the Vikings a few years back with Case fucking Keenum. So imagine him with a guy like Ben and our weapons we got. Right. And guys who we're, we're, we're hopefully going to get. So I want to mind Pat Shermer completely. Um... Let's see. Uh, I, mean, I can't else? really think of any more other offensive minded coaches that could be our new uh, OC. I'd probably have to agree with you. Pat Sherman would probably be the more ideal guy. Right. But, uh, again, it depends if, if the Steelers make moves at, at coaching. Tomlin has said he's he's not opposed to to, to some moves in, in terms of coaching. So, now that doesn't mean Fickner's going to get out. That could be Danny Smith might be fired. That could mean fucking... Uh, who else? We could get a wide receiver coach. We could get a new offensive line coach. So, because he said he's not opposed to changes at, in terms at the coaching, that doesn't mean that Fickner's going to get out of here. Right, exactly. There's definitely other coaches that he could just say, hey, you're out of here. Right. So, now hopefully that's not the case. Um, ho- well, I'm, I'm hoping, obviously, we get Mike Munchak back. I don't know how long he's with Denver and shit, but I would love to have him back and shit. But, um... Fick needs to get out of here, though. That, that, that's for sure. Yeah. And to answer your second question, who do you guys hope the Steelers draft with their second-round pick? J.K. Dobbins is the name that fucking pops out to me immediately. J.K. Dobbins, Jonathan Taylor, Tyler Etienne, or Tyler, uh, fuck his name. Travis. Travis, yeah, thank you. Travis Etienne. Um, speaking of Tyler, Tyler Johnson will be a nice option. Uh, although he's probably not a second-round pick. He, w- with how stacked wide receiver is, he could potentially drop to the third round. Right. Um... Let's see. Go keep it on wide receiver. Maybe uh, uh, the Oklahoma State wide receiver. What's his name? Tyler Wallace or some shit. I can't remember his I, name. I can't think of it. Um, I, I I gotta really like look at a lot of prospects concerning, you know, drafts coming up and everything. Right. Tight end, um, even offensive line. Yeah. Uh, another guy, or uh, you gotta look at offensive linemen too. You gotta look at uh, uh, 
there's this offensive line. He's a guard uh, from Michigan. Ben, Ben, so I can't I can't remember his last name. Um, of course, there's a Kentucky uh, uh, a guard who could pair up with Ben Snow again. Um, I think his name is Logan Stanback or some shit. I, I can't remember, man. Uh, I'll put the names here, right. but um, there's a few guys we could definitely draft at the second uh, in the second round. Uh, some big needs, but you know, hopefully we make some decent moves in free agency and we're signing guys so that gives us a little bit more flexibility to go after other other needs and shit. So, mm-hmm. um, but the next question comes from Gabriel Rodriguez. What team surprised you in NFC and AFC as in good or bad teams? Well, we'll start with NFC in terms of good. Uh, let's see. see. NFC, well, yeah, NFC in terms of good, I'd probably have to say the Niners. I mean, I feel Not like- me. No, I felt like they were going to have a good season. I didn't think they were going to be this good whatsoever. Yeah. So I was actually surprised that they had this good of a defense and how their offense is, you know, progressing and playing very well, even with very minor guys. Right. Like a Moster. Like, no one knew who the hell Moster was, but when he came in, he's getting touchdowns, yards, and shit like that. Yeah, so uh, now I expected, as long as they could have stayed healthy, which they did, I had high hopes for the Niners and... Damn, they they completely exceeded my expectations. Right. Um, now I'm honestly gonna go. Who could be good in the NFC? I'm gonna go the Cardinals. Uh, I like what the Cardinals showed this year. I think they have a lot of potential, a lot of promise, a lot of youth, a lot of shit to still develop at, and I think they could be a pretty uh, handy team next year. Um, of course, the Redskins. They just got uh, Ron Rivera. They got Jack Del Rio as defensive coordinator. They fired. Uh, uh, their uh, president, what the fuck's his name? Allen something? Brandon Allen or something? I can't, I don't not know. Brandon Allen. Um, I, Allen, whatever his fucking name is. Now they still have, uh, 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 fuck, what the hell? The, the owner of the Redskins, I'm having a lot of brain farts today, man. I apologize. But, uh, I think the Redskins could be decent, honestly, next year, man, with, uh, you know, Dwayne Haskins and Terry McLaurin and, and Darius Geis and Bryce Love and, and guys like that starting to learn and develop coming into their second right. year, second, third year. So, uh, and they still have a high draft pick. They could go get a defensive line. They can go get another receiver and shit. So, yeah, seriously. Um, damn, man. Um, but in terms of NFC as bad, I'd probably say the Cowboys. I'd say, I'd say the Rams. I, I'm not going to say they're bad, bad, but... Holy fuck, with that roster, how are you so mediocre? Ser- ser- seriously, and that's why I say the Cowboys, because you look at their team, they don't look bad. They don't. They're fully stacked. They barely had any injuries. Like, they were looking to be a playoff caliber team, probably even like a number three or four seed that they could have been. Mm-hmm. But they just completely, like, flopped this year. They had the Eagles, who are plagued with injuries, take their division. Yeah. It's like, damn, Cowboys, like... I'm not big on the Cowboys whatsoever, but I knew that I knew that what their roster was capable of, and I knew they could have been a great team. Right. They just didn't live up to the hype. Well, you they only didn't. have uh, one man to blame for that. Yeah, Jason Garrett. He still has a job, by the way. Yeah, how? Like how? Are you fucking kidding? How, how? Hey, hey, hey! To each your own, Cowboys. You know, I'm not gonna. I mean, if Jerry Jones, I mean, uh, what, what the fuck, bro? I mean, okay. It is they just it is. like being in poverty for the last 25 years. Whatever fits them, I guess. Yeah, seriously. I mean, uh, now, uh, AFC, as in good, probably the Bills. Yeah, definitely the Bills. I was definitely trying to say the Bills. I did Bills. not expect the Bills to make the playoffs. I didn't expect them to get 10 wins. Right. Now, but, I liked Josh Allen, and I think he was going to be a good quarterback. I still think he can be a really good quarterback. I didn't think they'd be this good. I didn't think they'd give the Patriots a run for their money and shit, or especially with who they had. They don't have a lot of star power. Hell, they have no star power. There's not one guy on the Bills that pops out to me in terms of elite. At least not yet. But they get the job done. Like, holy shit. Yeah, seriously. That's all you could probably ever ask for the Bills to do, and that's what they're doing. You know, Sean McDermott definitely turned that whole team around, especially that defense. Oh, yeah. Now, in terms of bad for the uh, 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 for the AFC, Chargers, no doubt. Like, yeah, Chargers. Chargers, Chargers they make... have so much <laughs> potential. Exactly. Man, they got... Fucking well, Philip Rivers needs to go. They need to go get a quarterback, man. If Tua is somehow, pa- if 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 Tua somehow makes it past the fucking, the Dolphins, swipe him immediately. Right. Or if he's gone, go after a Justin Herbert. Get yourself a fucking quarterback, cause Philip Rivers, is just declining like really badly. Mm-hmm. Go get yourself a new quarterback. 
They got Melvin Gordon, who was probably going to hit free agency, but they still got Austin Eckler and Justin Jackson, who can get the job done in the rushing game. How do you have Keaton Allen, Mike Evans, and Hunter Henry? And Mike Evans, Mike Williams. Mike, what did I say? Mike Evans. Well, whatever, man. Mike Williams. Uh, and, st- and still, you know, just don't have that top of an offense. Like, you have so many fucking weapons there. And Travis Benjamin, who's still a pretty reliable option and shit. So, damn. And the defense ain't that bad either. Bro, you On got paper. Joey. No, but you got Joey Bosa, Melvin Gordon, Melvin Ingram, excuse me. Uh, they got uh, Casey uh, Hayward. They Jatavis had... Brown, Uchenna Nwuzu. They got oh, Derwin they... James, who was out most of the year. But uh, Arian Phillips. God damn. You know, the, 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 fuck the, went the wrong? one rookie safety day draft, I can't remember his name. I really can't, but we were high on him. But, but yeah, what the fuck happened? Like, wow, bro. Wow. Yeah, I definitely have to say the Chargers in the AFC yeah. side. But sure. uh, good question. Yeah, man. And uh, Aaron Gonzalez asked, uh, who are the guys that need to be cut this year? Like we said, Baron, Chicolo, maybe Vance if he doesn't want to take a pay cut. And Foster. Yeah. Um, I'd even... Say possibly, just to make a little extra room, maybe. Let's see who else. Oh, those are the guys that just pop out to me immediately. But there could be some future, or so, some surprise cuts. Um, maybe a. Uh, shit, who fucking knows? Maybe a Jordan Dangerfield. Maybe. Although I think that would be kind of poor because we we're already slacking at depth on uh, at safety. So yeah, but it's not like um, he really amounted to anything at all besides right. special teams. Right. So, but yeah, man. Um, uh, I Tech Help three six seven twenty nineteen. What kind of music do you guys listen to? A little bit of everything, but I'm more so on the country side of music there. Um, Although today's country is not really country. It's not. It's it's fucking poor. It's, it's more like country hip hop, but I'm not really big it, on that. It's no. It's more so. Country pop, not hip hop. Um, but well, in it's, a way, it's, it's, it's both. not. Certain artists make it sound okay, but most are just garbage. Like I can't even. Like fucking they try listen. country, but they're just not country. Right? No, because they're not. Because I, I I listen to their shit. I'm like, bro. First of all, they put fucking Justin Bieber on the country radio. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? Right. What type of shit is that? That's a fucking disgrace, bro. Justin fucking Bieber, get the fuck out of here, man. That's a disrespect, bro. Yeah, seriously. seriously. And. But I listen to a little bit of everything, but mostly country, man. Right, same um, here. So, yeah. But uh, Jacob Mystic asks, what team are you rooting for to go to the Super Bowl? 100% the New Orleans Saints. I Definitely like Breeze. the Saints. Breeze is one of my favorites of all time. I even put him up there as my favorite player of all time, outside the Steelers, of course. Uh, and I just am a big fan of Michael Thomas. Um, and I like their defense a lot. I like Marshall and Lattimore. Uh, I like uh, Cameron Jordan. I like their defensive line. I like... A lot of things about their team, man. I like Sean Payton, so... Uh, now, even when Breeze went down, Bridgewater ca- came in. He didn't do all bad, but the defense was really the big turning point for that team. Like, when Breeze went down, the defense knew what they had to do, and they stepped up big time. I actually think they went undefeated they when did. Bridgewater started. They did, and and uh, I'm rooting for the Saints completely, man. I, Breeze deserves another Super Bowl. Michael Thomas, after a historic year, deserves a fucking ring, man. Like, that like, team all, deserves All it. the records they broke this year and... And just the dominance they have this year, they need a ring to show for it because yeah. if they don't, it's literally just going to be wasted like pretty much the Steelers whole decade. Yeah, it's just nothing but oh stats. You need you need something to show for it. Exactly. So go get it, man. Seriously. Um, next I'm, question. I'm hoping the Saints, but I'm still unfortunately going with the Patriots. Yeah. So, yeah, man. God, I hope I'm wrong. Yeah. Eagles gang two one five asked question, dude. How do Steelers feel about us Eagles fans calling Carson Wentz Pennsylvania? Will you guys also sharing Pennsylvania with us? Um. I don't really mind it. First I mean, of all, I never heard of Pennsylvania. I have. I remember when he was being called that after he fucking destroyed our defense in that week three game where we lost 34 to 3. Yeah, I remember. They're saying, that oh, game. it's Pennsylvania time, man. But, well, and, well, first of all, I never heard of it. And personally, I, I mean, I don't really care. You can call. You can call Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania, or whatever. I don't really care. I don't mind that. Honestly. I'm a big fan of Carson Wentz. You know, I think he can still be one of the best quarterbacks in this league. He's just. He has no fucking help. No line. No help. No, rec- no, no receivers eclipsed over 500 receiving yards this no, year. No consistent rushing game. Man, he just has no help, and he's still putting up. He's still balling. Good- he's still fighting. Yeah, man. I- I'm a massive fan of Wentz, so um, call Wentz of all you want. Go ahead. I like Wentz, so. Yeah. Yeah, man. Kim, it- Kim Tua, Tawa. Uh, again, I, pol- I apologize if I pronounced it incorrectly. 
Would you trade for a new quarterback, example Cam Newton, or would you draft one, or would you wait another one or two years? Thanks a lot for your vids. Greetings from Germany, man. Um, I wouldn't go after Cam Newton because his contract, and we can't afford that just for a fucking backup. Yeah, and um, quite, honest, quite honestly, I'm not really big on Cam as I once was when he was a lot younger, when he won MVP and everything. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like he's definitely declined. He's definitely more injury prone than everything. Yeah. Now, we could trade for a quarterback. Who would that be? I have no clue. Uh, I got to look at options there. I got to seriously think deep there. Um, I would more so draft one, start developing. That could be this year. If Jake Fromm goes in this year, I could see us drafting him in the second or third round if they indeed want to start focusing on the next franchise quarterback if that guy is not Mason. Right. So it depends what the Steelers really thinks, man. Um, but I would more so draft one and start developing one. Keep, try, of course, get some veteran experience there, of course, like, like we said. But right, because if, if Mason isn't progressing like they want to, draft one. Because Ben's time's running out. Right. And we gotta, I mean, Ben's going to be obviously number one. Mate, They already said Mason's going to be number two, but you got to think who's going to be the number three. Right. Hodges had a terrible year this year, and he might not even be on the roster next year. He's not an NFL quarterback. Uh, like, I mean, we could... Wait, what? I'm saying he'll find success in the XFL, not the NFL. Yeah, more than likely. But we could sign a guy, but I don't know who the hell that would be, as long as he has veteran and starting experience, or we could draft a guy to develop. I don't know. Yeah, so similar to when we, a few years back, when we had Ben, Landry Jones, and Bruce Gretkowski. Landry Jones was, of course, a developing backup for us, but Bruce Gretkowski was that veteran experience that helped out there and was some nice, you know, veteranship in the locker room. So I'm hoping we kind of get. Something similar to that with uh, Ben, Mason, and who knows. Right. So that's what I'm hoping for, at least for this year. Um, unless, of course, we draft one, but we'll see. I, I just think we need uh, some veteran experience in the locker room at quarterback just to help the guys there. Because yeah, because it, obviously with Ben down, you got nothing but young guys. And it's not uh, that's not going to And that's help. pretty much the whole story of our offense. Like, it's nothing but young guys. We need some veteran aspect right. to pretty much every position. Right, and, and that's not going to – exactly. So, And that's why I, I, I don't think the Steelers are going to go after a quarterback this year. Probably next year, though. Uh, but, again, it depends how Mason comes along. So, yeah, we'll see, man. Uh, but, yeah, man, uh, uh, next question comes from uh, Steel Man, who shout out to you, man. How would you guys feel if we got Marcus Mary Oda as a backup? Damn, I didn't even think of that. That's a – that's actually a decent option. Mary Oda isn't bad. He's just inconsistent. Yeah, like like um, he, he he doesn't he's not terrible. He's just not good. Right. But, but that's exactly be, what a backup is. Right, but would he be better <laughs> would he be better than what we would have or what we what we've had? Absolutely. But do we have of course he's going to ask for a little bit of money as a if, if he's going to be a backup, he's definitely going to want to Act for something decent, right? You know, because he was a starter, he was the number two overall pick. So for him to settle as a backup, if he is indeed a backup, he's gonna ask for something pretty decent, right? So, uh, do we have that to give Mariota? I don't know. Probably at but, the end of the day, even if we were signed by the pre, probably not. Yeah, unfortunately. But, but I would not mind Mariota as a backup. He'd be much better than what we've had to endure this year, and he is a little experienced. Honestly, I mean, so. it's definitely something to look at. I mean, you know, just like you said, he has starting experience, and that's something that we need at the backup quarterback position. Right. Or if Mariota actually starts, wants to get his career going again, this could be a revival for him. Now, I doubt that, but yeah, hey, I, I highly doubt that. But, but hey, th that that would be kind of cool though, uh, if that's the case, because at least we won't have to worry about that in the draft and shit. Um, right. But, I don't know, man. But I, I wouldn't mind Mariota. That's a pretty decent option, honestly. So, uh, damn, man. What running back should we get in the draft? If he is there, J.K. Dobbins, I, I, I'm even up for training up for him. Train up a few spots for him. You know, trade a few guys to get some extra value and then use, those, use that value to go trade up for a guy like J.K. Dobbins because he was fucking incredible in the game against uh, Clemson. And he's been incredible for Ohio State the last two years. Exactly. Dude has just been a beast. He showed a lot of toughness mentally and physically in that game against Clemson and shit. He is just absolute burster. He's got some speed there. He's a power back. He's also pretty decent in the receiving game. So the only thing he's got to work on is, of course, his pass protection and shit. But, um, you know, with the Steelers doing back-on-backer drills and, 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 uh, and training camp and shit, that right. has, of course, helped guys like Bell, like Connor, like Snell, like Samuels. That, that has helped their 
their blocking ability in the passing game. So, uh, I would love J.K. Dobbins in the black and gold, man. Mm-hmm. He'd be a fucking monster. But like J.K. Dobbins, uh, like you said, Jonathan Taylor, definitely an option. Uh, Travis Etienne. Now, now I prefer a Do- uh, J.K. Dobbins, but um, I I kind of feel like he won't be there because his stock is definitely rising. But with the other running backs that could be behind him, Travis Etienne is one that really speaks out. Right. Like he did uh, in that Ohio State game, he did great, especially receiving wise. Yeah. Like his yards after catch are severely underrated, and they are completely dangerous, and that's something that the Steelers have had for many, many years, one, one, even with Bell yeah, and that's you know, a, playing. And that's something we could bring back, because Samuels is that receiving back, but he's not elusive. He's not, you know, a guy that will get a lot of yards after the catch, unless, of course, there's free space. But, I mean, he's he's not explosive. He has no burst. No, he's not. Uh, a guy like Travis Etienne would be that guy to compliment possibly a Benny Snell very nicely if you want to give Benny Snell the chance. Um so, uh, it's but, definitely something to look at. Right. Or if we don't draft running back as early as we kind of hope or expect or think, like the second or third round, we could go after an A.J. Dillon. We can go after a Cam Akers. You know, just just name a few off the top of my head there. Right. Um. So th- there's guys we can draft any time in this draft because there's been many backs this league that have been drafted late and have been one of the top backs in the league. Guys like Chris Carson and – Philip Lindsay was undrafted. Now he's a starter and shit. So there's guys we can draft at any time in this draft and still find a reliable running back because this running back class is is stacked as a motherfucker. So we don't necessarily have to draft a running back early. We can go after other positions and then still get a quality running back in like say the sixth, seventh round and shit. So uh, that's how deep this class is. But All right. those are just options we can definitely go grab. And who wins in a fight with me, uh, me or still Jedi? Uh, Dan, what you think? Shit, I, I I honestly don't know. All I know is is that if that were to ever happen, I'm grabbing a huge tub of popcorn and <laughs> taking a nice fr- freaking seat and watching that fight. There you go, man. Honestly, <laughs> I'd pay fucking money for that shit. Get that on fucking pay-per-view, bro. Seriously. I think that'd be fun as shit, man. Yeah. Uh, but huge shout out to Steel Manning for his questions, man. Awesome. Uh, next question comes from ENC Network 26. What's up, you guys? He asked four questions. What player surprised you this season? Definitely Bud Dupree. I had no expectations for Bud Dupree at all. I thought he was going to be another fucking five-sack machine and and just rob us out of nine million. No, man, he's completely earned earned every fucking dime this year. And I have to say, man, it's kind of hard not to assign him. Um, Although there's obviously the the, the thought in the back of your head, hey, he could be lazy if you give him this extension and and go back to the five sacks this season. He could pull a Lamar Woodley. You know how Woodley was so dominant, so consistent, how no one could block him, how he was getting sacks pretty much every game. And then we gave him this this big contract and everything, and he was just completely injury prone, he was lazy, and he didn't amount to anything. I I, I don't think that would be the case for Bud Dupree, though, because his work ethic is out of this world. Even when he wasn't... Top tier like he was last year. His work ethic is out of this world. I feel like him and what remaining together, that it was already scary for the defense this past season. For years to come potentially, goddamn. Yeah, and with TJ Watt complimenting him well. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, man. So yeah, uh, that's probably the guy that surprised us the most definitely this year. Uh, number two, who should win the Royal Rumble? Drew McIntyre. Drew McIntyre or Andrade? Um, I would say Drew McIntyre. Or we're big Drew McIntyre fans. I don't know why he's not a why, champion. Yeah, yet. why the fuck hasn't he, you look at his? Just look at Drew McIntyre. You see his physique. You see his promo work. You see his in ring work. And it's like, how the fuck is this guy not the top guy on your fucking brand? Yeah, seriously. You know, so like I would, I would probably have to say Drew McIntyre or Samoa Joe. Or Samoa Joe, yeah. Because I, Samoa I Joe, mind. he just now turned babyface, but he's that realistic badass babyface that we have not had in such a long right. time. Right, and, and I would I wouldn't mind seeing Samoa Joe and Brock Lesnar again. This time with Joe going over. Yes, exactly. And Joe deserves it, man. Joe is so undervalued in that company. Um, like he needs a world title show for it. Exactly. He's, he, he's a fucking badass. So I'd say either McIntyre, Joe, or Andrade. You gotta start building new stars. You gotta start building. Some future for the company. Or if you want a big, you know, surprise, why not Keith Lee from NXT? Or Matt Riddle. You know, Matt Riddle has said for for fucking years, I want to retire Brock Lesnar. Who's the fucking WWE champion on Raw? Brock Brock Lesnar. It writes itself right there, bro. All you got to do is put him in the ring at, let's say, number 27, and 
All he has to do is just win the Rumble, and then you have your story. You don't even have to do anything. Just put them in the ring. You don't have to write for them. Just put them in the ring. Have Matt, give Matt Riddle the mic. He'll say what he needs to fucking say because he's been saying it for three fucking years. Exactly. You don't need to fucking write. You don't have to do anything. Just sit back and let him do all the work. That would be much. a great fucking match with Brock Lesnar and Matt Riddle. Give me that shit. Take my fucking That would money. be a legit fist fight because both yeah. of them are obviously former UFC fighters. Yeah, man, just... It, 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 it's so silly. You don't have to write a fucking thing. Just give him the, the the rumble and give him the mic, and that is it. Exactly. You don't have to write any fucking thing. He'll do the work for you, and he'll be your next big star. Exactly. I mean, that, Matt, that's, Matt Riddle has all the aspects. He just needs to learn to, with his like attitude and his like language ways, his demeanor. Everything. Yeah, but right. um, but nonetheless, Matt Riddle's a. Starting to make it. Right, but really that's, that's a complete shot in the dark. But uh, realistically, I would hope McIntyre, who I think will actually win it. Roman Ro- Reigns. Roman, yeah. Unfortunately. So, yeah. And there we go, The Fiend. Yeah. But we're not going to talk about that. What we are going to talk about is the next question. Which team do you think should get a new quarterback? Uh, easily the Chargers. Uh, easily the, 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 uh, the Panthers. Chargers, Panthers, Jags. Jags, for sure. Uh, maybe the, may, may, maybe the, the the Buccaneers, but definitely the Bengals. Uh, definitely the Bengals. Uh, that's gonna happen. Um. Uh, let's see who else is there. Uh, Steelers. Steelers. Arguably, arguably. I would say the Patriots, because I think Brady's time's running out. They always say that. I know, I know, but. And then he wins the Super Bowl. Yeah, I know, but seriously. They need to start thinking about their fucking future. Um, those are guys that come off the top of my head right There's now. There's definitely teams. more. I know there is. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to go down the division here. Right. Uh, fucking Browns. Um, ben Mayfield sucks. Um, Mayfield's fucking trash, bro. Um, the more oh, the Bears. Are, yeah, definitely Why the, the Bears. Fuck? But, but they're, but they're Matt, committing to Mitchell Trubisky. They have committed to Mitchell Trubisky next season. You know why they did that, right? As soon as he just waited tanking for Lawrence or I, Justin if, Fields. If the Bears get Trevor Lawrence, that's not even going to be fucking fair. If if they can if they can get Trevor Lawrence and keep that defense in their prime, hey man, seriously, and you got David Montgomery who they need to give the ball to more. Seriously, man. So it's possible. Uh, yeah, those are. Well, that's just a few teams that could use new quarterbacks. Yeah, seriously. And his last question is. Smash, Mary, kill Alexa Bliss, Mandy Rose, or Carmella. Well, right off the bat, I kill Carmella. Uh, I probably have to say the same. I mean, damn, no, no respect to Carmella. But. Uh, well, compared to the other two women, Carmella's uh, get get the fuck out of here. Um, I would say I would smash Mandy. Yeah. No, I would smash Alexa, and I would marry Mandy. Uh, what the fuck? Okay, now the video just started playing. I got it. Whoops, my bad. Uh, the video just started playing for some fucking reason, so excuse me. Um, I'll probably... S- fuck. Smash Mandy and, and, and Mary Alexa, I okay. guess. I guess so. Yeah, that's actually a tough one, for real, though. Uh, next question comes from Austin. He asked three questions. How would you feel if we drafted a guy like Travis Etienne to pair with Snell? I would absolutely love it. Give Snell the keys to the car. Give him the chance and get Etienne as the number two man. And just another great one-two punch. Etienne is that receiving back you could use, but he's also explosive in the rushing game. And he's got speed there, and he's got looseness. He's got strength. So I think that'd be a nice fucking pairing right there. No, seriously. Uh, trade Connor for some value. Uh, go get go get some extra picks. Go get a tight end possibly with a fifth rounder or an offensive lineman with a fifth rounder or a defensive end with a fifth rounder. Um, and I would, I would keep Samuels, I guess. Um... Just for just for the fuck of it, I, I guess I'd keep Samuels, um, and then I would put Snell as number one, and then I would give Etn number two and Snell. At or three. just rotate them in general, kind of like how the Saints do of Mark Ingram and Alvin Kamara. Both of them were capable number one right. and twos. So yeah, they both were fantastic together. Yeah, totally. So that's what we need to start doing. We need like we 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 kind of showed it. This year with the run back by committee, and we uh, we didn't really have any big but names. But we only yet. did that when Connor was out. When Connor was in, we didn't do that. Which, of course, fucked up Connor because he kept getting injured. Exactly. So, damn, man. Um, so, yeah. How many years do you think until we get our seventh Super Bowl? I would say two years. I'm going to say. That would be 
obviously Ben's length of his contract. I'm hoping within the next two years before Ben goes, but realistically, I I, I, I can't tell you. I just don't know. But if we don't get a Super Bowl with Ben, then it's going to be a long time, in my opinion. Yeah. And that, that that's going to suck. Because you look at this past decade, we should have won at least two or three, maybe four. Yeah. But the talent we had, and we were just, we were just completely wasted. And that is so unfortunate. Yeah. I remember 2017, 13-3, first round bye. That was our home, year. Uh, it that was. That was our year. Home, home field. We had Ben, Brown, <coughs> Bell, and Bryant all together. We didn't have stage year. I know that fucked up our defense. That fucked up the middle of the field. But we had the tools. And Pretty we much. Flopped. I, 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 so out of stage year, we were all healthy. And we went one and done to the Jacksonville Jaguars. And where the fuck are they? Where's Blake Bortles? Where the fuck? <laughs> Leonard Fournette. Uh, I mean, he's still putting up what? I think he just surpassed 1,000 yards this year. But yeah, but since his rookie year, he hasn't really done anything massive like we all thought. Right, and now the Jags are down in the dumps like, like they used to. So. Yeah. Damn. Uh, to answer your question, I'm hoping within the next two years, but honestly, I don't know. I don't know. It's so unfortunate to say that. Right, and it's third question, who would you cut and trade in the offseason? Like we said, Barron, Chicolo, Vance. I would try to trade Vance, but I know no one's going to take his cap, so that's going to be a cut. Um, or at least try to try to uh, create some cap space, uh, you know, reduce his contract. I wouldn't mind keeping Vance as long as he reduces his contract. Right. If he refuses, cut him. Cut him, seriously. Um, who would we trade? I would be open to trading Connor. I would be open to trading Terrell Edmonds. But I know that's not going to happen. Unfortunately. Um, that actually gives us another fucking position to try to fix. Um, although Edmonds, of course, isn't the answer there. But they're not going to admit failure on Edmonds th- this early. Unless, of course, he plays so bad like Artie Burns did. And then, then they bench him. Um, let's see who else. I would... Yeah, just, name, just the, the one we pretty much named earlier on. The... Yeah, so. Yeah, definitely, man. And uh, the Pride of Mexico asked... Uh, I'm a long-time Steelers fan. I go to a few games every year. My college teammate at the University of New Mexico was Brian Erlacher, son of a bitch. So I'm familiar with the game. That being said, let me add some food for thought for you guys to discuss on the video. Mike Tomlin might be the best option out there for us as a coach. However, he has costed us several years of not making the playoffs when we had mad talent, bad players calling, horrible clock management, bad situational football. Now, with that said, he has adjusted his coaching by some of those rough lessons learned, but it still costs us playoffs and possible Super Bowl appearances. Also, we give Mike Tomlin credit for doing decent this year, but don't we forget that Mike Tomlin is responsible for not having a decent backup quarterback uh, ready such as the Saints do. It's, just, it's disgraceful and a Mike Tomlin failure for the continued lack of preparation and our ability to win. Teddy B went undefeated with, with, uh, with Drew Brees out. Uh, we're giving Mike Tomlin too much credit as he has uh, continued to not deliver in Pittsburgh. He should have already had another Ben Roethlisberger ready to go knowing Ben's aid, but I'm sorry to say this. Mason and Duck are in way over their heads. Just something for you guys to think about. New England has Jimmy G ready to go. Why didn't Mike have someone ready to go? Getting guys motivated to play isn't good enough. Mike has failed Pittsburgh over the last 10 years, whether we like it or not. Holy shit. That is actually a very good point by the Pride of Mexico. I never really saw it that way. No. Uh, that's a good because, you know, yeah, you need a, a, a backup quarterback, <clears throat> a reliable right. one at that, and someone young. And that, that was what we were trying to do with Mason, but it turns out he had to go in sooner the, than we the thought. The thing with Mason was we didn't expect Ben to get injured whatsoever, but when Ben went down, they pretty much put all their eggs in the basket with Rudolph, knowing he didn't have experience playing the game of football in the NFL whatsoever. Right. Knowing he didn't have starting experience. And at first, he wasn't doing all that bad, but then something just drastically happened to him to a point he was playing awful. He got benched for Devlin Hodges, who ended up having a terrible season in himself. It's like our quarterback position was just so fucked. It's yeah. like, and he, again, that's he, he lack does, of preparation, like you he said. He makes a good point on why we didn't get an experienced or better backup quarterback. No one bends his history with his injuries right. can, with how he's aging. Right, but at the same time, now we could have done that years in advance, which I think we should have. You know, we, we need Landry Jones was not that. Uh, we needed someone with experience, someone that can help out the young guys like Rudolph. Um, and 
if Ben were to go down like he did, we need someone reliable enough to go in there. Someone as young as Rudolph, that's too much for him. That's too much for this team. It's it's not good. It's not a good look. And, right. it, and it wasn't this year, unfortunately. Um, but, yeah, I would probably have to agree completely. I didn't look at it that way. That's an interesting way to look at it. Right. Um, and, and, yes, Mike Tomlin has, uh, he pretty much, in a way, he has failed us because I, I don't know how you have all this talent for a full decade and don't even get one Super Bowl out of it. I really don't. It's very depressing. It's very unfortunate and awful when you really think about it. Yeah. But I do give him mad props for not having – you know, he has that never say die attitude. And I can respect that out of Tomlin because yeah. when Ben went down, he easily could have said, "You know what? We're going to tank. We're going to tank. We're going to get maybe a franchise quarterback, or we're going to get a, stu- a stud defensive player. We're just going to do that." He didn't say that. He literally took the risk of trading away a first round pick for Minka Fitzpatrick, knowing the circumstances. Exactly, knowing the circumstances, knowing that Ben was out, and he took that risk, and it pretty much, in a way, if you think about it, it was worth it. He took that chance and. Looking back at it, it was worth it. He took that chance, and he had that never said die attitude, and we ended up going to 8-8. Eight and eight. Yeah, so... And I can um, respect that out of Tom, and he didn't want to lose. He didn't want to tank, and I can honestly respect that out of Tom. Right, but I agree. His preparation needs to be better. It uh, does. This is shit he should have done by now. This shit he should have organized by now, and he doesn't. Um, so hopefully we get that a little bit more organized this offseason. He starts getting the preparation going, because Ben, coming back from injury like that... He's going to be a little more fragile now. He's going to be a little bit more, you know, it's it's more of one of those things where he gets hit all the time and we worry all the time. Like, he goes down and then he's obviously going to have aches and pains and it's like, oh, shit, is that going to affect us? Is that going to affect him? Exactly. You it's know, like, Ben's a tough guy, but he he's, is he's he's pretty up, much injury prone yeah. at this point. He's getting up there. He's going to be more fragile now. So we definitely got to be prepared for this for this job here. So. Right. Yeah, man, that's a pretty good way to look at it, seriously, though. And I guess we're going to finish out this guy. How long are we going? We're going uh, some bit over an hour. Uh, yeah, we'll just close out with this one. Uh, Still is fan 19. He asks, who do you guys want at quarterback in 2021 if we trade up and Mason doesn't pan out? Lawrence or Fields? Uh, more so Lawrence, but I said if Fromm were to return to Georgia, which I think he should, and that would be ideal for him and his craft and his you know, future, I would, wouldn't mind if because I, I don't know if Lar- us trading up for Lawrence is too realistic. I honestly don't know what the fuck we trade up for. We have to give up the whole fucking bank to try to try to trade up for Lawrence, Pretty man. Pretty much. Because um, he's already making a state that he's going to be a number one pick next year, next year's draft. Because that, that, that's pretty much confirmed, unless he gets hurt. Uh, but that's confirmed right there. Um, but if Jake Fromm were to return and declare for 2021, he's another name I wouldn't mind. Right. Honestly. So, anyway, guys, that is uh, part one of answering questions. We apologize for the length of this video. If you made it this far, damn, bro. That's, uh... Some dedication, we appreciate it. But if you didn't, can't fucking blame me. Can't blame me whatsoever. We'll come up with part two within the next few days, man. Answering your guys' questions, and, we'll ho- tr- and hopefully that will be a lot more shorter. Right, and we'll try to we'll try to finish it with part two, and we'll try to be less talkative like we are now, which we are pretty much just wasting extra fucking time and shit. So, see you guys next one, man. Like, comment, subscribe. We'll see you later. Peace.